out. All right, and I know I have had uh, a lot of fun with each of you, and I've been enjoying myself. And I know that Don has been working in hearts, and uh, just what a joy that that is to see. Are you there with me in Matthew chapter 14? Yes. Uh, I'll hurry up and get there. That's an easy one to find. It's the first book of the New Testament, and um, those of you that don't know that, Matthew chapter 14. And we're going to be looking at a, uh, a passage of Scripture that I'm sure many of you all know. You're familiar with it. You've heard preaching about it. Uh, but Matthew chapter 14, we're going to look in verse number 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. So here we have this story, and again, I'm sure that uh, probably every person here has heard about this, how Peter left the boat, he walked out to Jesus, and Peter was walking on the water. And he was walking on the water, and then, what happened? He got his eyes up to Jesus. He began to notice the storm, he saw how bad it was. His faith began to slip, and as his faith slipped, so did he. As his faith went away, he began to sink in the water. Uh, but I want to notice something here. Verse number 31, it says, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. And that's what we're going to be looking at here this morning, is that stretched out hand of Jesus. We're going to be looking at that stretched out hand of Jesus. Uh, we see that Jesus stretches out his hand to us in our storms. He stretched out his hand to us in our storms. And we've talked about this this week, but some of you, you might have some difficult things that you're faced with. You might be going through some real troubles, some real problems, some real hardships. But I want you to know that the hand of Jesus is always there for you. Uh, we find that in verse 25, the Bible says that this was in the fourth watch of the night. The fourth watch of the night. And this means that it's between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. This is the darkest time of the night. So in the darkest time of the night... When it's dark, there's a storm, there is Jesus. And I want to let you know that Jesus sees you in the middle of your storm. In the darkest times of your life, in the worst parts of your life, Jesus is there for you. Jesus sees you. He knows what you're doing. He knows what you're about. And I want you to know that Jesus always cares for you. He knows what you're going through. It doesn't matter how big your storm is. It doesn't matter what it is that you're faced with. Jesus is there for you. And when you feel like you are sinking, He's there with that outstretched hand. He was there and He was able to calm their fear. Now, we know that many of the disciples, what was their profession, what was their job before they met Jesus? Many of them were fishermen. But here they are, and they're in this storm, and they are, they're scared. This is a rough storm, but then they see Jesus. And verse number 27 says, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. When you're in the middle of your storm, just look at Jesus. When you're in the middle of your trouble, the middle of your problems, just look to Jesus. He says, It is I, be not afraid. There's many promises that God gives us, but one of the greatest ones, I think, is that He says, He will never leave us nor forsake us. He doesn't leave you in the middle of your storm. He doesn't leave you in the middle of your problems. You know, sometimes we might have friends that will turn their back on us. We might have friends that will leave us when the going gets tough and then they get going. When you have trouble that comes in, 
They're nowhere to be found. They're nowhere to be found. That's not the way that Jesus is. Jesus is not that way. Jesus always offers that stretched out hand in the storm. I want you to turn back with me to Matthew chapter 8. Let's look at this hand of Jesus. Matthew chapter 8, verse number 3. Matthew 8, verse number 3. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. We find here leprosy healed by that hand. Leprosy is a picture of what? Does anybody know? Sin. Leprosy is a picture of sin. And Jesus is able to reach out that hand and he's able to cleanse us of our sin. I want you to look at another instance here with that stretched out hand. Look with me in Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8, verse number 23. Mark 8, 23. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, he put his hands upon him. He asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes. And made him look up, and he was restored, and saw every man clearly. I'm so glad that when Jesus stretched out his hand to me, he didn't just take care of my sin, but he also made me to be able to see. After I got saved, I was able to see for the first time in my life. Now, I'm not talking about my own physical eyes. I'm talking about spiritually. Uh, when I got saved, for the first time in my life, I was able to pick up the Bible, read the Bible, and God was able to speak to me because my eyes had been opened. Before that, I was blind. I was blind to the things of God. I was blind to what He was doing in my life. And I want to say this. You ought to treasure your Bible. You ought to treasure your Bible. I'm going to tell you some of my pet peeves, and I've seen it this week. You take care of your Bible. You don't toss it around. You don't leave it on the ground. You don't leave it behind. No, you take care of the Word of God because this is God's Word to you. You ought to treasure it. You ought to take care of it. You ought to get serious about the things of God. Amen. Some of you right now, you just laugh and having a good time. Get serious about God. Get serious about His Word. You might be here this morning and you're still blind. You're still blind to what God's trying to do for you. It's because you've never truly been saved. I praise God that somebody was born in the family of God last night. And I know Isabel's shy, but she doesn't like to say a lot. Isabel got saved last night. Amen. And we thank God for that. God had been working in her heart. God had been convicting her. God had been speaking to her. And she was born into the family of God. So you know what? This morning she got up. She's able to come to the chapel this morning. And for the first time in her life, her eyes are open. Amen. She's not walking around blind anymore. Some of you, you might be here and you're blind. You're blind to the things of God. But Jesus reaches out that stretched out hand. And he can heal you. I want you to look at another one here. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, verse number 24. Matthew chapter 9, verse number 24. And he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in, and he took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. Here we find this little girl. This little girl had died. And Jesus says, oh no, she's just sleeping. She said, put your shirt down. She's just sleeping. And they laugh at him. They begin to make fun of him. They begin to mock him. And he says, no, just sleeping. He goes, he takes her by the hand. Takes her by the hand. She gets up and she's alive. Jesus reaches out that stretched out hand. Again, there was somebody last night that was dead in their sins. Amen. They were dead in their sins. And now they are alive forevermore. 
you might be here and you're still dead in your sins. You're dead. You are dead in the things of God. And Jesus is reaching out His hand. He wants to take you. He wants to see you born again. He wants to see you born into the family of God. I preached last night about not putting it off till tomorrow. I hope for some of you that God's still giving you one more opportunity. But again, I'm thankful that Jesus stretches out that hand in the storm. I want you to go back with me to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. Look with me in verse number 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Here we see a stretched out hand that speaks. Verse number 28, we see a desire for Peter to be with Jesus. He had faith. Verse number 29, and he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to come to Jesus. I can see Jesus right here just reaching out his hand saying, come to me. That's right. Just come to me. Exactly right. Just come to me. Now, a lot of us, we like to give Peter a hard time for going out there and sinking. But I want you to know this, that Jesus was the, or that Peter was the only one that had the courage not to leave the boat to get out on the water and walk to Jesus. Amen. Don't be so critical of somebody that attempts something for God when you're right. still on the boat. Right. That is good. You might be here and you say, oh, look at them. I can't believe they're going out and doing that. And they're going to make such a fool out of themselves. And I can't believe they're going out there and doing something for God. And it's very easy to be critical when you're on the boat. That's true. But Peter, he stepped out. He said, Lord, if it's you, let me come to you. Jesus says, come. Just come to me. I want to let you know that he's still saying the same thing today. He looks at you and says, come to me. Have faith. Come to me. Right. The Bible says that we're saved by grace through faith. It's not of works. Lest any man should boast. There's nothing that you can do to save yourself. It is by God's grace, but it requires your faith. Right. Grace is what saves us, and faith is the vehicle that gets us there. That's right. I want to ask you, have you come to Him? Not just in your salvation, but in your daily walk. In your daily walk. So we talk about reading the Word of God. When is the last time that you have really just sat down and read the Bible? Do you treasure the Word of God? Do you treasure the Word of God? Do you treasure your walk with Him? We need to come to Him. Again, He's standing on the water. He's saying, come to me. Just come to me. I want you to see here in verse number 30, the stretched out hand that saves. But when he saw all the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Verse number 30, we see that fear overtakes him. He falls. Verse number 31, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and he caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Peter, he's looking around at all of the circumstances. He's looking around at all the storm. He begins to sink down into the water. He sinks down into the water. And he says, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. You know what I'm thankful that Jesus did not do here in this instance? He did not say no. You lost your faith in me. You should have kept looking to me. You should have kept your eyes upon me. But instead... You are sinking and you get what you deserve. I'm so glad that God does not give us what we deserve. Every single one of us, we deserve to sink. We deserve uh, death. We deserve hell. But Jesus doesn't do that. He reaches out His hands and He pulls us up. Why? Because He loves us. Jesus loves us. God loves us. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. I think it was Andre yesterday that was saying, uh, he was asking about the dads in here, and that no dad would ever give their child to die for somebody else. And I can say, absolutely, I would not do that. But you begin to think about that and say, well, God knew that Jesus would be raised from the dead, so maybe he was okay with it. I want to say, I would not be okay having my child go through any amount of pain. I love every single one of you. I wouldn't do that for you. 
I would, not, I would not let my child experience any pain for you. I don't love you that much. But God loves us so much that He was willing to send Jesus to the cross to go through all the torture, all the pain, all the torment, to be killed on that cross for you. Why? So we could reach out that hand. When you say, Lord, save me, and you be pulled up. I'm so thankful that when I stumble, He does not let me sink. You know that you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. We all still struggle with sin. We all still battle it. And uh, it, was, it was one of you guys yesterday saying, I'm glad that I'm not God. I'm glad I'm not God either. Right. Because if it was me and I saw myself, I saw some of you that would continue to sin after you've been saved, I would say, let them sink. I'm done with them. I don't know about you. Sometimes I struggle with second chances for people. Anybody else like that? You struggle with second chances? I'm so glad that God gives us second chances, third chances, fourth chances. We get new chances every single day. Because He's so forgiving. He's so loving. He's so gracious. We don't deserve it. When I stumble, He doesn't just give up on me. I'm thankful that we are eternally secure in Him. We're eternally secure in Him. Jesus loves us so much that He went to the cross. He stretched out His hands for us on the cross. And He died so that you would not have to. He died so that you wouldn't have to face one second in hell. We've heard so much preaching here this week. I can't remember who said what. But somebody said, if we were to just get one glimpse of hell for one second, just one second, it would change our life. Just to hear the sounds, to feel what it feels like, to uh, even the smells of hell, it would change our life if we could just see it for one second. If you're here, you know Jesus as your Savior. You don't have to. Not for one second will you ever experience it. You will never know that pain. You will never know that feeling. You will never know what it's like to go to hell. Why? Because Jesus stretched forth His hands for you and He says, I love you. I love you. I died for you. Amen. So that you wouldn't have to. You might be out there right now and you need to say, Lord, save me. <coughs> Lord, save me. And you know what you will do? Every single time, He will reach out that hand and pull you back up. Maybe you're here and you're saved. You have faith enough and you, you started your walk with God. You started to try to walk out on the water by faith. And something has happened to your faith. Something has happened. Maybe you're going through a storm and you've gotten your eyes off of Christ. Let me pull you back up. You know what would have been a foolish thing of Peter to say here in the middle of the storm as he's out here walking on the water and he begins to sink? It would have been a foolish thing to say, no, I got it. <laughs> Lord, let me take care of this. I can do this. Just let me pull myself up. You can't do that. Right. But it's just as foolish of us in the middle of our sin when we're sinking yeah. to say, God, I can handle it. We're no more able to handle our sin than we are to be able to pull ourselves up and walk on the water. Yeah. It takes the work of God. So let God raise you up. Let God restore you so that you can go out and do a work for Him.